वेलकम टू ई पाठशाला पी जी कोर्स ऑन कंप्यूटर सैंस द कोर्स इज अबउट वेब टेक्नोलॉजी एंड वी टूडे लुक इन टू दि फिफ्टीन मॉड्यूल विच ऐक्चुअली टेल्स अस् अबउट दि एक्सटेबल स्टाइल शी ट्रांसफर्मेशन सो द अबजेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज टू डिस्क अबउट दिस एक्सटेबल स्टाइल शी लांग्वेज ट्रांसफर्मेशन इट्स ऐक्चुअली इट्स अ कंबाइंड कॉन्सेप्ट विद एन एक्स एम एल so once we have seen about the xml uh, it's de- how to define dtd how to define schemas and we have also seen about uh, the parses different xml parses what is the support for different parses in xml parses in java and we have seen modules such as how to define the path expressions for xml so this actually with the basics of all these things we can will try now to understand the fundamentals of extendable style st- style sheet language transformation so this is actually a style sheet language supported for xml and it it's for expressing the style sheets it actually this xsl consists of two parts one is an extendable style sheet transformation that is our xslt which is of interest today and an xml vocabulary for specifying formatting semantics which is xsl fo fo stands for formatting objects so this xsl is a style sheet language for xml which consists of two parts like xslt and xsl fo so this uh, xsl specify specifies the styling of an xml document but this xslt is used to describe how the document is transformed directly to another xml document or html document or to an x html document and that also uses the formatting vocabulary so with this background we'll see now what is xslt it's a short form for extendable style sheet language transformation uh, it's a declarative language programming language for specifying the transformations from xml languages to other xml document xml document or to other languages like html or x html so even though it is actually a style sheet it doesn't do only a visual effect like css but instead what it does is it extracts the data from the uh, xml document and it allows a combination of html and css to format them so the transformation sta- the t stands for transformation so your xml document may be a very big file so you want to extract the information from the xml document and you want to apply the styling for those information you have extracted so this xslt will help us to do this so it actually has the dynamic properties by which it understands the relationship of the different tags that is defined in the xml document applies a conditional statements upon an uh, static xml file and does this transformation so now we'll see what is the use of this xslt so as we know that this xml documents are self describing and structured documents and it has the all the informations defined with the tags so the tags provides the semantic information of the data that is stored in an xml file and we know that the xml file can be viewed as an tree uh, document tree so every tags that is defined in an xml document has a hierarchical relationship so to generate the xml file as a html file we need to use this xslt why you want to do this conversion conversion from an xml to html so as such this xml describes the information but if you want to display in, a, in any browser you have to display it as an html file so the transformation from xml to html has to take place which is actually done by this xslt and this xslt will also help us to generate new xml document so an xml file which can be a very big file from which you extract the information and you can transform it to another new xml document and this is actually designed primarily for converting an xml to xml or xml to html or an xml to x html so this xslt actually cuts down the server load so this transformation is done on the client side so you don't want to this server is not actually doing this transformation it is done in the browser side 
So, since we are not querying upon the data in the database, this transformation takes very less time. So, this XSLT when you look into the anatomy of an XSLT or the structure or the syntax, it looks very simple and very easy to write an XSLT file and it is very easily understandable and to read, it is reusable. And since it is XML based, all the advantages what we are seen for an XML file holds good for an XSLT also. Now, how, how does it works? So, this XSLT basically use the XPath, the technology called XPath to find information in an XML document. So, you have different elements in the XML document. So, to retrieve those information, to identify the dif, uh, information, you need to make use of this XPath. And this defines, this XPAL defines the parts of the source document or identifies the different section of the source document that should match one or more defined templates within this XSLT. So, when a match is found, this XSLT will transform the matching part of the source document to an resultant document. So, looking into the architecture, you can see that you need two things. One is the XML file, the source file. And the other thing is in style sheet which is written in XSL, it holds it is a dot extension would be in dot SL file. Now, this is your source tree. So, from the XML document is a tree document, you can identify all the tags uh, from a root node as a tree. So, it is actually given a source tree. So, this XSLT engine would check for a uh, style rule in the source document and if it matches then it transforms to an result tree and this result tree would be applied for any application processing or for parsing the XML document. So, the style sheet what does it do? It actually describes the rules for transforming a source tree into a resultant tree and the when the pattern, pattern is actually given with XPath. So, when a pattern is matched in the source tree, the corresponding template rule would be applied for the matched pattern. So, this XSLT processor reads the XML file, finds for the matching pattern and apply the rules to transform this XML document into a resultant document. So, now the syntax declaration starts like this. So, it is an XML being an XML file, it starts with an XML declaration and then in order to make it as an XSLT document, we need to use the root tag called style sheet. So, this is the first root tag that you define within this XSLT document and it has to be given the version, the attribute version has to be used and then you include a namespace call namespace that is actually defined in the W3 schools. So, in order to use the different XSLT documents, uh, XSLT elements that are defined within this namespace, you need to include this namespace within your style sheet. So, the first statement that starts with an XML version and then the root uh, tag or, or the root element of an XSLT document is going to be in style sheet. So, in order to access all the uh, properties, attributes and features defined in the namespace, you have to include this namespace. So, now you can see here, this is a document, the document structure of an XSLT file. So, as I told you, it is actually the XML version and the next statement is going to be the style sheet which includes the namespace. So, you can either include the namespace here or it can be with the style sheet element. Now, this XSLG document can contain one or more templates. Templates actually define the rules that you want to play for the elements. So, here you can see that actually uses the namespace prefix as XSL. Here we have given the namespace prefix as XSL need not be. So, all the elements that is defined in the namespace uh, and to be used in the XSLT document, you precede the uh, elements with the prefix called the namespace prefix called XSL. So, template is one such element that is defined in the namespace. So, it can the document the XSLT document may contain one or more templates. So, here is where you can see there is one template, there is another template and there is another template. This template uh, has got an attribute called match. So, here in the match attribute you try to give the XPath expression which tries to match the pattern in the source XML document. So, this style sheet is the root uh, of this XSLT document, it has to be end with it. So, every template has to be closed. So, you can have multiple sections 
or multiple template rules that can be applied for an within an XSLT document. Now, this is a very simple example given here. You have an XML file. Uh, this XML file is actually using the uh, XSLT file. The XSLT file has to be stored with an extension of dot XSL. So, within this XML file, you want to include the style sheet. So, use XML style sheet type equal to this and use the href attribute to link to the XSL file. So, the XSL file is render dot XSL which is defined here. So, this is the code for the render dot XSL. So, now this XSLT file this is XSL or XSLT file starts with the root element called style sheet includes the namespace up to this we know and then we started with defining the templates. So, all the XSLT elements has to be preceded by the namespace prefix. So, XSL colon template you use the match attribute and you have given the match attribute with the slash. So, this says that it starts from the root of the document or it re retrieves the document from the root element. Now, it matches with the pattern that is it starts looks for the root element. Now, you this is actually the action you want to apply for the matching pattern. So, here you had said that uh, you are converting trying to convert the information extracted from the XML to an HTML. So, you want to retrieve the information from the XML document. So, make use of uh, uh, XSLT element called value of we will see in detail in the coming slides. So, XSL value of select equal to the name of the element. So, the name of the element here you can see that there is only one element defined in the XML file called message. So, you try to retrieve the, uh, the text that is defined within the element called message. So, and you are trying to value of retrieves the text value that is within this element called message and you are trying to apply this style call you are converting that XML extracting information from XML document and you are converting to an HTML document you close the template and you close the style sheet. So, there is only one template defined within this XSL file. So, now what we have understood is that an XSL uh, document XSLT document has an extension like XSL and it begins with the XML version it has to include the namespace. So, you are putting within the style sheet element uh, the namespace that is defined in the w3.org and any uh, XSLT document may contain one or more template rules. So, you use an element called template use the attribute called match and it ends with the style sheet. And uh, now, uh, when you want to select the message text, you are actually making use of another XSLT element called value of and you are selecting the message. So, this is actually select you are giving the name of the uh, element, the name of the XML element that is the message is an element in the XML file. So, the name of the element is given and the value that child is the text, uh, child of this message element is the text element. So, you want to retrieve the value of this element message element which is actually the text element. So, you can also use alternate XPath expressions in the select attribute like dot slash message or slash message slash text or you can say dot slash message slash text. So, these are the different XPath expression you can give it in the select attribute. And now, this uh, example what conversion is actually happening in the example we have seen here you, you, you would have seen that uh, it has a template uh, template rule. So, template actually defines the action what you want to uh, do on the XML uh, data that is extracted from the document. So, you make a match with the uh, match with the slash which means that it chooses the root. So, XSL template match equal to slash the statement actually chooses the root and then you are uh, writing a statement like HTML body which actually uh, is returned to the output file this data is returned to the output file. So, this XML is getting converted to an HTML file and the contents of using this value of you retrieve the contents of the message element and it is also returned to the output file and then you are using again the statement like body HTML uh, which is also actually returned to the output file. So, the resultant file looks like this. So, the XML file what we have seen earlier is now transformed to HTML body H1 
the content from the XML document is retrieved as welcome to this course and it, it gets closed. Now, coming to the different style sheet elements, we have matching and selective elements. So, we have elements like template as we have seen earlier uh, and then we have an element like apply template, we have an element like value of, uh, we have an element like call template and different there are matching and selecting templates. There are branching elements like uh, for each, if, choose and the other things. So, let us see one by one. Now, looking into more detail about this template element as we have seen a style sheet can consist of one or more set of rules that are called as templates. So, this templates actually contains rules to apply when a specified node is matched and this template element is used to build the, the, the tag the template tag is used to build the templates and then the match attribute is for associating a template with an XML document or to specify a pattern to match with an XML document. So, the match attribute can also be defined to define a template for the entire XML document. So, supposing you give the match attribute to be a slash then it defines the whole document, but it, it is not required when you are using the uh, name uh, attribute of an template element. So, XSL template, uh, template element has an attribute called name. If you are using this name attribute, you do not want to use this match attribute. So, now looking into the different attributes of the template element. So, this template element can have attributes like name, match, priority and then mode is to give the name of the element on which the template is going to be applied. So, directly the name of the element can be given or it can be matched with the uh, match attribute. So, traversing or parsing the XML document it tries to match with the attribute that you give in the match attribute. The pattern of some pattern or an X path expression can be given in the match attribute which signifies the element on which you want to apply the template rule. Priority is another attribute you can set it. So, this priority number of a template determines uh, what priority to be given for this current template. So, if the priority is very low then it is not considered in front when considered with other higher priority templates and there is another attribute called mode. So, it actually allows the element to be processed multiple times to produce different result at each time. Now, this is a simple example uh, there is a file called student.xml. Uh, and it is going to use a style sheet called students.xsl. So, we need to define this style sheet called students.xsl. So, this class has got an element called student. So, the root element is the class element student and the student has got a first name and a roll number. So, now uh, coming to the xsl file as we told it starts with an xml version and you need to include the style sheet and the namespace. And then coming here, you say you use the template uh, template uh, XSLT element. Use match equal to this. This chooses the root element of the document XML document. Now you try to give it's a HTML code which you put in within your XSL file to convert it. Uh, here uh, you say that uh, students, which is actually the heading which you want to print it. Then you are trying to retrieve the information and put it in a table. So, you give a color different colors the table heading is given as roll number and first name and the next row you want to select the student name and you want to display it. So, you make use of an element called for each and you try to select the student within this class. So, here you can see the, uh, the XML file has got the root element as class and you have the student information. Student has got for uh, name and then roll number, first name and the roll number. So, you match, you want to match with every student in the XML document and the value of the uh, uh, value of the attribute roll number for the student you want to retrieve. So, make use of the value of element select uh, at symbol represent the attribute as we have seen earlier in earlier modules or classes at symbol represent the attributes. So, select the uh, attribute value of the roll number. So, roll number is an attribute you want to retrieve its value and then you want to retrieve the value of the first name. 
So, now you are placing it actually in the table. So, you now you can see that you have retrieved the roll number and the first name from the XML file and you are displaying in the form of a table. Now, as we have seen this there is an element called value of element which actually extracts the value of an XML document and it adds to the output stream of the transformation. So, now coming to another example this is a catalog example uh, it is an example given in the uh, w3schools.com. So, you can see that there is a uh, catalog CD the title of the CD artist uh, country company price year everything is there and you have several other CDs within this catalog uh, element. Uh, we will see that how we are using actually the value of the value of element. So, now starting with this template match equal to slash then you try to write your HTML file which actually displays in terms of this uh, in terms of table you try to display uh, the title and the border. So, here you had said that the row the first row of the table has got two heading uh, heading table headings like title and artist. So, title and artist you have given here and then you try to extract the title and artist from the XML document make use of this value of element select equal to this attribute you give the pattern. So, the path x path. So, you said that within this root element is the catalog element in the XML file within that you have multiple CDs. So, CD within that you try to select the title and then again you try to select the artist. So, it retrieves the value of these two elements the text values of these two elements and it displays in the form of a table. So, you are trying to convert an XML to an HTML file for a display purpose in the browser. And then coming to the for each element. So, this element allows to do looping in XSLT. So, if you want to uh, read all the things, so read the title and artist of all CDs, then you can make use of the for each element. So, the same code you will now make use of for each select is given here, which is actually want to uh, traverse the path uh, catalog CD. So, you are in the directory, you are in the tag like CD within the CD you are trying to retrieve the value of title and artist. So, for each is a looping statement which reads every uh, CD of the catalog element and it retrieves the value of the uh, text value of the title element and the artist element. And then uh, we can also use filtering filtering the output with this uh, uh, for each you can see here uh, the code you can see here for each select in the X path we have see, uh, studied about predicates the same concept is used here. You can see select is given as select attribute takes a value like the path expression like catalog CD. You had said that you select only the CD where the artist artist name is going to be bomb dialin. So, you are using the filter operators like equal to not equal to for less than you use the entity and greater than you use the uh, the ambassador uh, gt uh, semicolon means that these are entities uh, instead of using directly the symbols use the entities to use the same operation of less than and greater than. So, you write the predicates within square bracket you set this condition and you want to retrieve only those element which satisfies this condition. So, now you can see the output to be like this you try to retrieve all the elements, uh, uh, but the name of the artist of the CD element should be this person only if it is so it retrieves the title and the artist. So, there is only one element one uh, XML uh, information that holds the uh, artist name to be this. So, it retrieves the title and the artist. So, this is how you make use of predicates with the uh, for each or within the select attribute how you can use predicates with X path expression. And you have XSLT element called sort. So, this is used to sort the output and uh, before you print it before you want to display it you can make a sort operation. So, to sort the output you can simply add this uh, element called XSL sort. So, now you can see the code you retrieve use for each which will read all the CD elements. Now, you make a sort on the attribute value called artist. So, uh, you display you try to display the article and artist, but you are sorting according to that or attribute called artist. So, now you can so you will see the output of it in the coming example. Uh, similar like sort you can uh, use uh, there is a conditional element call if. 
So, you can make a test uh, test condition you can check for a test condition using this element call if. So, within this for each you can say that if test equal to the condition given like price is greater than 10. So, if the price is greater than 10 then it selects the title and the artist and then there is another uh, conditional element call choose uh, which would be used in conjunction with another element call otherwise. So, you will this is actually like an if else uh, support in with XSL. So, you choose when condition is like this. So, there is the elements the keywords you can note it down like choose when. So, choose when this condition is true otherwise you choose this ok. So, you can use like an if else you are applying in uh, choose when and otherwise. So, this is a simple example which describes about how it is happening. So, you select uh, you ret you traverse all the CD elements you try to select the title, but you are checking the price to be greater than 10. If so, then you will select the value of the artist otherwise you will select the uh, value of the artist and then you will display it. So, here the code uh, you are actually trying to select only those art value of the artist that is selected would get a color like red color. So, you are giving a formatting given a condition you give a format select the value of that value element and then give a formatting different formatting otherwise you give another formatting. So, your code would be your output would be displayed. Now, this is another XSLT uh, example uh, that actually describes about how you are using sort this is what I told you you can use within for each use a sort and you select according to the artist and you can display it. So, you can see that the values are sorted according to the artist. So, similar like all these XSLT elements you have uh, like template you have another concept called apply template. So, this actually tells the uh, formatter to compare each child element of the match source document against the template and if a match is found the template for the match the output for the matched uh, node. So, it actually the template would match for a specific pattern, but apply templates would match with all the child nodes to be processed. So, this is a simple example given how we apply the templates. So, here uh, we will use uh, template match equal to CD, we apply template select title and we apply template select equal to artist. Now, uh, you can see here uh, it is actually uh, you give a different color and then uh, for the title. Uh, for specify different color for the title and the artist. So, you, you use the apply template a different template for title and artist. So, here in the example code you had said that apply template select equal to title you have given a uh, you have specified a template like this. So, you have said that style color equal to uh, for the title you have specified a red color and for the template which matches an artist you have given a different color like green color. So, applying these two templates it make use of. So, this is where you make use of an apply template and you can uh, write different templates write different templates and apply it. So, similar like apply templates you can also have an call template. So, call template is like a method call. So, once you define a template you can make a call to the template and you can apply it. So, this is the code. So, you had a template defined a template with a name like print hello world and now uh, you, you have defined the template with the rule saying that you have to concatenate this bar element and then with the uh, boo element. So, hello world this is how you want to uh, you want to concatenate and now you when you when the element matches f o which is the root element you want to apply this template. So, use uh, call template which is like calling a template uh, and give the name of the template as print hello world which is actually printing the uh, text as hello world because you have uh, concatenated as hello and then the world should come. So, this is an example five uh, example of an XSL output is also given. So, now in this module we have actually discussed about uh, XSLT the uses of XSLT we have understood the basics and the structure of an XSLT document and we have explored about the different XSLT elements such as template how to retrieve the value of some element using the value of element. We have seen the different select elements conditional elements like for each if choose and then we have seen another element like sort 
Then we have also seen about apply templates and call templates and we have seen few examples for all these things. There are other several elements also, but these are the basic ones we will normally use it with XSLT. Thank you.